Hey guys, it's Brandywine Style here with my first video, as promised, of seven key things to keep in mind when you're putting together your Dream Snaps challenges. There's a lot of tips, a lot of information going out there about Dream Snaps. You know, sometimes the scores can be kind of finicky. You can do really well one week and then not do so well the next week. You can get different, different advice from different people. I'm sure you've seen different voting habits from different people. I've been playing games like this with styling voting systems, with decorating voting systems since at least since 2019. I started out playing uh, Covet Fashion. Since then I've played Shining Nikki, which is kind of like a styling game. And I've also played um, Elder Scrolls Online, which I'm sure some of you might have played. Um, but there's a furniture decorating aspect in that game. And I've won multiple decorating contests across different guilds, across different holidays and different events. Sometimes multiple times in a row, I've won decorating contests. So I have a lot of experience with, um, you know, kind of what people are looking for when they're voting for pictures, uh, color coordination, like symmetry, composition of the photo. There's different things that you can keep in mind when you're designing your dream snaps that tend to be consistent across different themes, different challenges, and apparently even different games. Because I use a lot of those same techniques with the Disney Dreamlight Valley Dream Snaps, and they seem to have been working for me pretty consistently. Like we're still pretty early in the Dream Snaps um, feature that they've released. So obviously some algorithms can change, you know, some voting habits can change. Uh, there are never really any guarantees with that kind of stuff. But like I said, over the years, I've noticed that these techniques do tend to work. So I wanna share them with you so that you, if you're looking to improve your scores, if you're looking to have more fun, maybe earn some more moonstones, uh, hopefully some of these tips can help you as well. Uh, one of the things that you definitely need to do is regardless of whether it's an outfit challenge or a furniture challenge is you need to design both for sure like there's enough competition out there so if your outfit is up against somebody else's outfit and their background is decorated and it matches and it's like looking really nice and then yours is just kind of a plain background because you only focus on your outfit that person's going to get the vote over you so if you're looking to get the most votes and to get that that edge over maybe another entry that doesn't have the ba their background decorated on an outfit challenge or maybe it's a furniture challenge and their outfit is not on on theme as much as yours is like you know you're going to get that vote instead of instead of the other picture so the second thing to consider when submitting your dream snaps photo is the composition of your entry. And what that means is basically the way things in your picture are arranged. Uh, your picture does not always have to be perfectly symmetrical, but it does help. It helps balance out the photo. It helps draw the eye to it. It helps make it look a little neater, a little more artistic, um, and just a little more like organized and, and just pleasant. Um, so this is one example. Uh, this was for the fire and water challenge and this photo actually got ranked 28. Um, so I'm sure the the items that I had for the points, which we will talk about later on, uh, did contribute to the score. But I also think that if I had like one palm tree or just like one cooking station instead of two and balancing it out on each side, it probably wouldn't have the same impact that it has. It's the same with the chairs. Like the chair behind me is actually covered, but I have like two blue chairs, you know, on the outside. You've got like four dishes in the front. That's very balanced. The table is centered. The table is not off to one side of the picture. Um, there are a few other details, small details in the back, like the umbrella, but even that is balanced out with the ice cream stand on the other side. So I wouldn't submit this picture if it was like just the umbrella and then nothing on the other side, or even just like the chair on the other side. Having the ice cream stand helps balance out the blue of the umbrella on the other side. And then you've got, uh, you know, two palm trees in the back. You've got two, the, the blue, the aerial lamps. There's two of those in the back. And then you also have like the, the waterfall is centered. So I wouldn't do like one waterfall off to the side and then like nothing in the middle. So um, you've got things like the torches on either side. Just the general balance of this photo, I think, helps uh, give it that impact when like it first pops up on the screen. People see like, wow, the food is front and center. That looks delicious. I can see the details. You know, I wouldn't submit this picture with the food like back on the red counter behind me. I wanted the food to be front and center. So it's like that first impression um, is really important. And that's one of the first things that they notice, I'm sure. The third tip that I wanna talk about is first impressions. This is a really important tip because I think sometimes people forget that people are voting on different devices and on different size screens than what you're used to looking at. So if you're designing your dream snaps on like a 40 inch or 50 inch or even like bigger TV or a bigger monitor and you're thinking, wow, this looks great and perfect and look at all these amazing details and then somebody else is voting on like a switch or smaller device, um, then they're not 
necessarily going to see all the details that you think that they can see. And so you you need to keep in mind how your picture looks, not just to yourself, but how it comes up when it's in voting, uh, especially because it's going to be half that size when it's actually up against another photo. Um, unless, of course, they click on it to expand it to full screen, which they might not necessarily do unless they see something that catches their eye, unless they have a reason to expand the photo. So if you are wanting to submit something like this, like, a, you know, the Alice in Wonderland Tea Party, this is a really great view on your screen, but maybe when it comes up in voting, people might not be able to see how much effort you put into all the detail. So you might have to zoom in a little more, you know, and maybe kind of like angle it a little bit, maybe get like a little more of the cake, a little more of the balloons and do something a little more like this, you know, and not not something that's just like way out there, you know, where they, they can't see, like you don't want to submit something like that because it's got mostly black, you know, or not black, but pathing around the edges. You can barely see the tea party. Like that's probably not going to get you the consideration that you deserve unless you were to don't, I won't do selfie because now you're just like blocking the background, but um, you could do something like this and maybe angle it, maybe get a little bit of like lights in the corner. Um, Definitely all the stuff on the table. And of course, you know, you can reposition your character, maybe put her like closer to the middle so that when you are actually taking your picture, you get like more. Yeah, see, now you're not missing as much of the, of the table if you put her in the center. So experiment with that, move your character around, see where you can get more of the details. And this is what I mean when I'm talking about like the composition of the photo. If you were to submit one like this, it wouldn't be the worst idea to have, you know, the balloons kind of be more symmetrical around the edges. For the most part, you don't want to rely too much on the details in your picture. Like you want to make sure that it's something that's going to catch someone's attention that their first impression is going to be a wow type of impression um, where you're either zoomed in enough to see all the different colors and the details of the picture or just that you've put something into the photo that's going to be able to get their their attention right away and be able to uh, let them know how much effort you put into the photo right away without studying it too much because you can't that's the thing is like you know the details of your picture and how much time you spend on the picture how much effort you put into it but everybody else doesn't necessarily know that right away just from looking at it so you want to make sure Sure that the picture that you take, not just the scene that you set up, but the picture you actually snap at the end shows the effort that you put in. If you put a lot of details, then you might need to zoom in to make sure that those details are visible. If you can't zoom in because it's, you know, you're not able to fit all of the requirements when you zoom in, you need to get like a further uh, zoomed out photo and you need to do like a really wide pan, uh, you know, where you get more of the scene then you need to take that into account in your picture and make sure that you're including some other elements around the edges. Um, and we'll talk about like framing, which brings me to the next tip, which is that you need to do something unique and eye-catching in your photo uh, to help you get votes, okay? So one of the things that you can do, for example, is use objects to frame your photo, like almost like a literal frame around the picture. Um, I find in this game, it's kind of difficult if you don't use like flowers on the bottom or hanging decorations on the top. It's kind of hard to get the photo framed on the top and the bottom because we don't have stickers like we did in Shiny Nikki. So this example is actually from a different game. It's the game I mentioned earlier called Shiny Nikki, which is a styling game, but I'm gonna show you how I use the same techniques from this game uh, in Dreamlight Valley, and I think they do still work. So this picture, for example, I don't think it would have gotten rank, what is it, rank 59, if I didn't put the framing on the picture. If it was j literally just a doll, um, even if she's totally perfect and beautiful, it's got the, like the right makeup and the sparkles and everything like that, I think it might have done okay. But I think the reason why it ranked so high is because I put the stickers in the corners to give it some framing that really drew people's eye to it when it came up in voting against the other picture. Um, it helps it look like we talked about earlier. It helps it look symmetrical. It helps it look filled in. The corners don't look blank, you know, just like plain background behind her head. Also, her hair is black, so it blends into the background, right? The background's already dark. So if I didn't have the framing in the, the corners, the whole top of the picture, apart from maybe the crown, would be pretty dull. So I, I use this technique actually quite a lot in that game, and I've tried to use it a little bit in, in Dreamlight Valley as well, which I'll show you some examples. Um, but for now, we're just going to jump to the next picture here, um, where I did kind of use the same technique here. This one, I think you can see got rank 62. 
um, and I used those gold lines that you see in the corner in the top left and bottom right corner are actually like a totally other object it's like there's some like metal bars or something like that and I just tilted them and pushed them off to the side so they would look like gold stripes or gold lines making some kind of framing for the picture um, and I did the same thing with like I added some bat stickers and then that broom that you see actually was kind of plain so I added a um, like a bow sticker on the bottom so these are some of the little things that you know pop into my head as far as how you can do something unique to your picture to make it stand out from the other pictures if this picture was up against a totally identical picture with the same outfit and even maybe even the bats and the, and the moon and like all the details but it didn't have the framing i don't think they would get as many votes as the one that does have the framing um and then so last but not least this is the another um one of my submissions that actually did get rank one i actually got rank, rank one twice in this game which is like it's almost impossible to get rank one even once but i managed to get it twice um and this one as you can see it's not even really symmetrical like the other ones but i think that it just had um enough balance with like it, i think if the moon wasn't in the back and it was just like the plain blue background I don't think it would have done as well um, having that moon there and definitely having some of the stars and it has a little bit of framing because you can kind of see the jewels hanging in the corner so like we don't have these kinds of stickers in dreamlight valley but you can use um you know like weeping willow trees you can use other things that sparkle which i'll talk about in just a second um to help add some other like sparkling elements or a little more just like life to your photo around the edges um to help give to help draw some attention to it so you can use trees to frame your photo. You can use lamp posts. You can use the garden trellis. Uh, there are a lot of different things you can do to kind of add uh, not just framing, but also dimension. Like it adds a little bit more dimension to the photo. If you have something that's kind of all the way in the front or all the way in the back, it makes the photo look a little bit more deeper. And like, there's just a little bit more life to it. So for example, this photo here, I believe got rank 331. Um, and I don't think it would have done as well if I didn't have the flowers in the front to help draw that attention to it. Like maybe it would have done well just because I think the colors in the background and the outfit and just the overall like story that the picture is telling is, is probably nice. But I do think that the, having the flowers definitely helped um, add some more like artistic value to the picture. And as I said before with the composition, it helped add some symmetry. It helped add some color for sure because like the bottom of the picture was basically just brown. You got the brown skirt, you got the brown uh, paving, like everything was just kind of dull. So I added those two flowers there, you know, the character centered right in the middle. Um, and I think that definitely helps. And then you can also add um, different objects to your picture to help add some effects. So that sparkle that you see in the bottom right corner is actually from the books from Olaf's quest, which I was lucky enough to save. I think that when you're done with the quest, you're actually supposed to just like sell them or something, but I happen to have them in my storage for like a super long time and I took them out. And when I dropped them on the ground, I realized that they started sparkling. So I held onto those and I thought these would be really great as a decoration. So I do, I use them as a decoration outside of Merlin's house, but I also use them for dream snaps. Like I'll just put them on the ground, um, you know, on the edges of my picture to get a little sparkle. If you don't still have the books from Olaf's quest, you can actually just use um you can just use dreamlight fruit because dreamlight fruit has the same sparkle so you know you might not want the, the fruit itself to show in the picture but you can just kind of like move it just outside of frame or just below the frame and then still see the de details of the sparkles you can also put the the scar cooking station the one that has like kind of the green bubbles in it that one has like a green fog coming up from it and you can use that effect if you place it in the very front of your photo to get kind of like a green fog um, coming up from the oven into your photo. I don't, I don't have it on me right now, but I'm trying to see if I can maybe find, um, let's go to the Sunlit Plateau where I have one of those cooking stations and see if we can get it to glow. Yeah, there we go. So right here, the cooking station is just outside of frame. But if I were to just angle it just a little bit, I would still get the green fog from it without having the cooking station in the picture. So this is obviously not the best example because nothing matches. I'm not wearing the right outfit. But if you had the right background and the right outfit and then you framed that cooking station right outside of the visible area of the photo, you can get that green fog effect without like actually having the cooking station in the picture. So that's just one example of several. Like I said, you can use the Olaf books from the quest. You can use the Dreamlight fruit. You can use the cooking station. 
Um, and I'm sure there are probably other objects in the game that I haven't even thought of that have some effect that you could probably use um, to add some unique element to your picture. You could even, you could maybe even have like Mirabelle right on the edge and just get like the butterflies from her without actually having her in the picture. So just experiment with different things and see what kind of effects you like. The fifth tip that I want to talk about is lighting. Lighting is so, so important in your picture. Um, I see people try to use like nighttime pictures, which is really nice when there's a lot of like glowing elements in the picture but a lot of times there are not enough glowing elements in the picture and the picture just looks too dark and people can't see what's going on in the picture um i've actually seen people voting like on their streams and stuff like either streaming on youtube or on twitch or somewhere doing live voting for the pictures and they'll literally say out loud like this is too dark i can't see what's going on in the picture and they won't vote for it so if that's you if you're trying to do pictures in the dark like that's fine but you need to make sure that there's also enough lighting so this picture is is, is not bad it's another version of the one that I ended up submitting but personally for me especially like I mentioned earlier it's going to be on smaller devices uh, sometimes people might not be able to see all the details that you can see I have to think about how this looks on a switch not on my 82 inch tv so I didn't want to submit a picture that was a little bit too dark even if it has a lot of glowing on it so I tried to change the time of day um, and I ended up with this which I actually thought was too bright now the sky is like fully blue you know it's almost kind of like blending in with the blue of the chairs and the blue of the palm trees and in my opinion it was just like too much blue i wasn't getting the glow that i was going for you can even look and see that the fires are not glowing as the way they were in the picture that i actually submitted this one the fires are glowing much more the sky has a little bit of like an orange hue to it which actually kind of like helps tie in the the orange glow of the flames in the bottom i think it just comes together much more nicely than this picture which is like so much blue so come over here and then you have this orange glow that perfectly balances out the the blue that's already there between the palm trees and the trees uh, or the palm trees and the chairs and then another tip like i mentioned earlier with the unique items like the the dreamlight fruit the olaf books uh you know the, the green cooking station in this one i actually just I tried, a, it took a few tries, but I snapped the picture like right when the pet was like flying to me. I had to like let the pet go and then pose for it. So it would like fly to my arm and it had like a little flame trail behind it. And I snapped the picture like right when the trail was flame, um, when the, the flame was trailing. And I managed to get those like sparkles like right above the food, which I think definitely helped. Like I said, this picture ranked 28. I think all those things definitely helped. I think the points helped, which we'll talk about next. Um, I think the, the the trailing little fire sparkles helped. I think that the symmetry helped. All these things are a lot of things to consider. Um, so this, this is just one example of the lighting. Um, but the other thing is that your lighting, you wanna make sure that it has purpose, okay? So if you're putting like a bunch of different lamp posts in your picture, you wanna make sure that the colors make sense with what you're doing. You don't wanna just add like random light cause oh, my picture's too dark, I need lights but they don't go with the theme of what you're doing, right? So if you're doing like Forgotten Lands, you know, Haunted Castle, maybe you wanna do like purple lights or green lights. You don't just wanna like throw white lights in there. While we're talking about lighting, one of the things about Dreamlight Valley, um, it's, it's gorgeous. It has absolutely breathtaking lighting in the game, but the lighting does not provide a lot of ambient light. It's mostly just light where the lights are. Like there's a sparkle, kind of like a twinkle of light happening, um, but it doesn't illuminate the area in the way that it does in other games. Like I mentioned Elder Scrolls earlier, if you play that game, that game is like, you can put one candle in a dark room and it'll really light up that whole area, like the whole dining area, the table where you place the candle. Whereas in this game, um, the, the, the lights just don't provide a lot of illumination to the area. It's mostly just a glow where the light is. So you have to be careful with that because sometimes as beautiful as the photo looks to the naked eye, at the end of the day, when it comes up in voting, it might still be really very dark. This is a picture that I was going to submit for my Dreamers Unite challenge. Um, and I'm actually looking at it on my TV right now and it looks really bright, like bright enough. And I actually think that it would have been good to submit this, but I'm looking at it on my OBS, like on my smaller screen and it's just so dark like i can't see that many details i can't really see the bottom of the picture at all like i can see the flowers a little bit but below the flowers it looks pitch black now on my tv i can see leaves i can see all kinds of details but on the smaller screen i can't really see anything below the flowers it just looks like black corners in the picture um so i had to keep in mind when i designed this picture that it looks nice to me on my tv it's nice and illuminated but when somebody's voting for it on a smaller screen maybe 
um, they might not be able to see all the details that I can see and I just don't I didn't want to risk it I didn't want to risk that people would just pass over it because they're like oh it's nice but it's dark I can't can't really see it um, so I ended up going with a totally different submission which was this one and I think that one's much brighter like it doesn't have all the same elements of the, the fairgrounds and everything that I like from the other picture but to me it was less of a risk going with this picture because of the and the picture is actually in evening you can tell because the gazebo was on um this is a little bit later i changed the daylight you know to evening so i could get the, the um, lights to glow but because of everything around it because of the green bush because of um merlin's home because of all those different elements the flowers it has much more of a glow and brighter colors than the picture that you saw before um and while we're we're on the topic, I just want to show you really quick, like this is actually the picture I took the first time. And you will notice um, like one of the tips I gave you before about the composition, about the symmetry and about doing something eye catching. I was not happy with this picture until I added the flowers. I think that it makes a huge difference. So if you're, you know, if this is your picture, you've got to look at it like, what can I do to help draw more attention. What can I do to balance it out? What can I do to add more colors, add more light? You don't want to overdo the picture because then it just looks cluttered and people are like, what's going on here? And they won't vote for it. But um, I think with this one is a perfect example of it just looks too dark in the bottom, in my opinion. Like there's nothing going on in the bottom right corner. It's a little bit going on in the left, but it's just, it needs more. When you're talking about a competition, like if you're just posting it by itself saying, hey guys, look at my picture, that's probably fine. But when you're in a competition and it's up against another picture that's like totally balanced and really bright and it's got like amazing colors and lights and stuff, they might even have a hard time choosing. But at the end of the day, they're going to be like, mm, I'm just not getting the wow factor from this one that I'm getting from the other one. So you want to take that extra mile and go and add, you know, I went and I, I just like went to my inventory and I, put, I looked for foliage and I added them and you notice I put them kind of like close enough, you know, to me towards like my direction so that they would be like right in the frame, kind of popping up a little bit towards the bottom and they just add that extra color. So this is something, this is one example, but you can use this technique in all your different um, pictures and challenges and things like that. So the sixth tip I wanna talk about is staging the scene. And by staging, staging the scene, I don't just mean, you know, like setting up your, your decorations. What I actually mean is preparing the scene uh, to be ready to take pictures where you're not going to be constantly interrupted by things you don't want to be interrupted by. Um, when I submitted my beach photo, the Ocean Views photo, I had so many characters getting in the way of my picture. Like they were covering items in the background, they were getting in the way of the frame, they were doing all kinds of things. And it was like more than one character, it was like three characters and they wouldn't move. Um, and it ended up taking me longer, you know, to try to get the perfect shot. So what I eventually did was I actually fenced off the entrances to the beach. I went and I, I blocked, I just got a fence and I got like some rocks or something, whatever made sense. And I just like fenced off this, um, I fenced that off and I didn't want to have to fence off this whole large area down here. So I just fenced it up here. I just put like a small fence like here so they couldn't come down. And then I fenced off the glade, like right here. I think I just blocked this area off here. And I was able to take my picture in peace. It was so nice, you guys. Um, now I did still have people that were like already in the beach. So what I did was I just buddied with them really quick and I fast traveled out of the beach. And then I just, you know, hit goodbye. Like, okay, we're not hanging out anymore. Dismiss them. And they all just stayed outside of the beach where I left them. Um, so that's one trick you can do if you're having trouble taking your picture because you're getting too much interference. Now, if you want characters in your picture, that's perfect. You don't need to block anything off. You can like buddy with them, take your picture with them. Maybe, maybe like wait, hope that they walk through your picture. Then you don't need to fence anything off. But I'm just talking about if you're trying to take a clean picture and they're getting in your way and it's taking extra time, then fencing off the entrances and fast traveling them outside of the area is definitely a faster way to get that done. Sometimes the dream snaps can take longer than you would like because you're already having other obstacles. Like it starts raining while you're trying to take your picture. So if you're having all these other things getting in the way you can't afford to be like i finally have the perfect shot it's not raining it's the perfect sunset and then like mirabelle comes waltzing into your picture with like butterflies and whatever which is great if that's the theme but not if it's like you know channel your inner darkness and it's like mirabelle comes with her butterflies it's probably not what you want so um you know block it off if you have to um you know to be able to get the results that you want the seventh tip is to pile on the extra points, okay? I think maybe that goes without saying, but I think some people might not fully understand the technique there. They're just doing their best to fit as many things, any, as many required items into the actual photo as they can. So obviously you can't submit this picture because it's got nothing nice to look at, but you can kind of 
include them in your picture by just putting them in the background and just outside of frame. So this is the scene I used. It's the staging I used for my Dreamers Unite entry. Um, and I just included a much of that, as much as that's of those tags in the background as I could and made sure that they weren't in the final frame of my photo. So it's kind of, like I said, it's kind of finicky. It takes a little practice because sometimes if they're not just inside the frame enough or if they're too hidden or too far away, um, you might not get the, the points for, for the tags. But generally, if it's inside the frame or even just outside of frame or if it's like behind another object, you can still get points for including that. So if you have multiple items with those tags on it, then just try to include them so somewhere in the picture, even if it's like slightly behind the tree or something, especially if it's small, if it's like a really small bowl or something or a cup, you can just like sneak it way far in the background. It's like not even visible because it's basically the size of one pixel, but you'll still get credit for having the item in your picture. So that's definitely a, a way to help stack up the points. With clothing, it's a little bit trickier because you can't hide things really with the clothing. Um, but this is an, an age old trick that we used in Covet Fashion all the time with the layering. Okay, so we do have things that we can layer, like you can layer your socks and your shoes, you can layer your jacket and your top. So if you can make an outfit that has a jacket and a top and a skirt and some socks, that's going to probably get you more points than just putting on like a gown by itself because you're missing out, you're missing out on a slot between the skirt and the top. Now, that's only if you can put together an outfit that's the best for your picture. Obviously, if it's a ball gown challenge, then you don't want to like sacrifice your ball gown to put a skirt and a t-shirt because then you're going to, you know, obviously you're, you're going to get points, but you're going to lose votes because the outfit doesn't make sense for the theme. So the priority is how the outfit looks. And then, then after the, the, how it looks is how many points can you get for wearing that? So like, if it is a summer challenge, don't just say, oh, I'm going to throw a scarf on. So I get the points for the scarf. Like definitely pick different neckwear, like maybe a necklace, a small subtle necklace or something for your beach look. Yeah. So you can, like I said, you can wear ankle socks if you don't want the socks to show on your outfit, you can just wear the really low ankle ones and then you'll get the points for wearing them, but they won't actually show in your picture. Now, I know that I said I had seven tips, seven secrets to success, but since you stayed till the very end, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip, which is probably the most important tip I can give you for scoring well in Dream Snaps, for enjoying your Dream Snaps, and that is to remember to have fun. Now, I know everybody says that, most importantly is to have fun, and you're like, yeah, but I'm not having fun if my score is trash and if I'm not getting any rewards. Like, I, I totally get, if anybody gets that, it's me, because like I said, I've been playing these competitive games, these styling contest games for years, and I have definitely suffered um, where you put in so much time and effort into your entry and then it just doesn't get the results that you expected. But one of the things that you need to understand with these voting based games is it's always going to be a gamble. All of the tips that we covered previously can definitely help, but there are no guarantees. Like that's how you can improve your chances of getting a better score. It's not how you can guarantee that you're going to get a better score. There are too many factors. There's algorithms involved. There's human voting preferences involved. There's even, you know, there's going to be, unfortunately, there are going to be down voters. There are people who just have like certain preferences and they like refuse to vote for certain things. Like I've seen people say, I'm not going to vote for pets because it's too cliche. Well, like we don't really have that many poses as it is in the game. So sometimes you kind of have to use the pet to get your character to pose in the way that you want it to some people just enjoy using pets like it's there's nothing really wrong with um designing your picture in the way that you prefer and it's just it's a gamble of of who's gonna like your particular tastes and your particular outfit and your furniture you can use all the tips i showed you to help improve the composition of your photo and make it more attractive but at the end of the day it's your picture and you should be designing it the way that you like it and not the way just the way that you think that other people will like it the most important thing is that you have fun with the picture and you enjoy the picture because if you're just doing it like a chore every week then you're not going to have fun with it and it's going to be super stressful um so i cannot stress that enough we're only in the first few weeks of this and if you're like already stressing out about it it's gonna you're gonna get like super burned out by the time we've been doing dream snaps for like the rest of the year and the years to come that you're playing the game like i know this because like i said i've played so many games and after a while you're just like i don't even want to enter anymore like it's not worth it i'm not gonna win any moonstones anyway like it just gets boring so if you want to continue to have that drive to have fun with it like you've got to learn to not take it so seriously like put in effort so that your picture is nice but don't spend like your entire day, you know, ignoring your family, ignoring your friends, like not eating, like skipping meals, you know, like coming back to it, editing it 500 times. Like if you think you can do better, edit it once or twice, sure. But I wouldn't obsess over it. Like you really need to be careful with chronic editing of your picture because a lot of times you can over edit and overwrite something that was probably your best entry. Like you had a really, really good entry. It was solid and you kept second guessing it and you edit it and edit it and then it just like took a new picture and before you know it you're like i don't even know why 
I did that because the other picture was better and now I really can't get it back unless I do it all over again. So just try to relax, try to, uh, you know, enjoy the process, use some of these tips that I've given you, hopefully they help. And then when you have your picture that you're happy with, just accept it. Know that you're playing the lottery. Know that you've submitted your picture out there into the wild, you know, for some like, for some gamble, for some chance to get a good score. And if you don't get a good score, don't take it personally. It doesn't mean that you didn't do a good job on the picture. It just means that, like I said, there's algorithms involved. There are voting preferences involved. Sometimes your picture might not have been shown as many times as somebody else's picture. Um, so at the end of the day, as long as you're following that last tip um you know to have fun then i think that you win either way like even if you didn't get a really good score so those are my seven secrets to success plus my bonus tip about having fun on how you can improve your scores on your disney dreamlight dream snaps challenges if you enjoyed this video if you got help from any of the tips that i've given you please remember to like and subscribe for more tips like this i am also on twitch live every wednesday at 11 a.m eastern time where i'll be uh, reviewing my dreams my own dream snaps results as well as like voting on other pictures and of course like touring my valley different things like that so come on and check me out the links are in my my youtube profile thank you for watching and i hope to see you next time bye